Hubo una vez un gran rey que tenía muchas tierras, un castillo y también un amor. Pero los caprichos de ese amor con el tiempo sin castillo y sin tierra se lo dejó. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome in. You have found us once again. Shoot the gap, the rabbit hole fantasy football focus show. I am your humble MC, Brian the Amigo Baldwin. And I am so glad that you tuned in to the show. This is our 97th show, everybody. Our 97th show, November 17th, in this hopeful year of our Lord. And we have a great show again. The Royal We have a great show for you today. <laughs> On today's show, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and go over some merry early Christmas, cover some of the good news, and uh, I'll go over Thursday's shoot or cease fire. And also, we'll talk about the trends. You know, called uh, what's going on. So, of course, before, before we get started, I always like to make sure and thank the supporters of the show. Uh, sports host app as you know it's a nothing but love social sports app if you're tired of the twitter and all the stuff that goes along with that you know then uh check out the sports host app it's a social uh app where you can talk about any type of sports and it's nothing but love so there's not really any much hate there so yeah make sure and download it sports hopes broach sports host app you'll be happy that you did and of course high volume music radio yeah man i can't say enough about High Volume Music Radio app. Yeah, make sure and download that app. Uh, check out the website, highvolumemusicradio.com. Uh, you, you get an incredible amount of music, just an amazing array of music just on, on the app. It's a uh, Houston radio station, so it's it's uh, local, locally sourced, so to speak. And uh, you also get, you know, not only do you get this uh, music, you get incredible shows like Andrew B's Vocal Sounds, Rock and Roll Radio, Bring Back the A-Track, Access Granted, the Brown Sugar Express. What's on your mind with that boogie? Blame it on the boogie. The Monday mixtape. And of course, Drive Time Sports with Charlie and Brian. If it ain't high volume, it ain't loud enough. All right. So usually on these shows, uh, I'm, I'm without uh, without Brock, uh, my my cohort, my partner in crime. He's uh, he wasn't able to make this week, which is fine, you know. So you just get a little bit more of me. So hopefully that's fine with you guys uh, and gals. Um, but um, I always like to go ahead, you know, you know, uh, talk about uh, Monday night show uh, game. But by this time, it's already been analyzed, you know, to death. Um, all I could say is just uh, OBJ, you know, um, ain't that old, like I said, that great mare, that old great mare, she ain't what she used to be. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be anything. And just that whole offense looked off rhythm. Um, and uh, then, of course, George Kittle, you know, uh, he was back. So that was great. Uh, he's becoming a target leader again. Debo Samuel bona fide wide receiver one so that's fantastic there and uh you know i i this is something i haven't heard people talk about but i want to talk about I mean, we all remember the butt fumble but now we have the butt pick yeah but it was called back to a defensive to do a defensive holding penalty but 49ers kawan williams made an incredible interception using only one arm and a glute it was definitely an athletic move, but I think uh, Williams would have had a completely different experience if the nose of that football had tilted <laughs> just a little bit more. I mean, he would have technically caught the ball, but it would have been a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> okay, so, but come on. I mean, people aren't talking about that, and they're acting like they've seen these things all the time. I mean, come on, man. A, uh, a butt pick has to be something you got to talk about. I know that it's not fantasy relevant, but come on, everybody. I mean, that's just, it's just fantastic, you know? So, all right, um, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got really to say about Monday night's football that no, I haven't heard anybody really talk about. Um, but as you know, on, uh, on the show, anytime that there's any type of bad news, I'll always like to say it with a smile. And the best way I can think of is saying something with the smiles with Merry Early Christmas. So I'm going to say Merry Early Christmas to certain managers because of certain bad things that happen. Let's get started. Merry Early Christmas, AJ Dillon managers. Austin, Aaron Jones went down with what has been diagnosed as a MCL sprain, and AJ Dillon was a monster when he took over as the workhorse. Tests indicates that Jones should only miss one to two weeks. But I'm not opti- I'm not that optimistic. To be honest with you, I really, I'm really not. Um, 
I'm starting to think. I meant, firstly, I think he'll be out until after, at least until after their bi- their white thirteen week thirteen bye week. And uh, also, secondly, that this isn't the first time he injured. Uh, he injured that knee. You know, when an injury like this heals, the body builds up scar tissue to repair the area. And scar tissue isn't as strong as the actual ligament. So there's a chance that the normal recovery time might not be applicable here since the injury might be more than minor, but less than severe. Meaning that it could take a lot longer than um, actually anticipated. So make sure and, uh, you know, this is what I'm seeing happen. One to two weeks. Uh, well, we're going to maybe wait a week. Maybe wait. Look what look what's happened with C8, uh, with uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. We'll talk about it in the news section. But, I mean, he, that guy's supposed to have been back when he first got injured. He should have been back by now. But look where we're at now. Merry early Christmas, Wayne Gallman Jr. Managers. Atlanta's running back slash wide receiver gadget man, Corderell Patterson, injured his ankle early in the game and wasn't heard from again, leaving Gallman to take over for him since the Mike Davis experiment seems to have been, seems to have been deemed a failure. Atlanta fears that Patterson has the dreaded high ankle sprain, but as of right now, he's going to be out a few weeks, leaving the door open for Gallman. However... However, those those little tricky little Falcons, they did list P- P- uh, Patterson as a limited participant in today's practice. So could he really be back this soon? I mean, with a game on Thursday? Um, I don't know. I don't know if he does. He's Herculean. Uh, but uh, the initial report was that he's going to be out a few weeks. Um, but if he doesn't return, you know, and, and you're all excited about, you know, Wayne Gallman and everything like that. Uh, just a word of caution. You know, Patterson made his hay through the air, not on the ground. And on the ground is, uh, you know, Wayne Gallman Jr.'s game. So I'm not sure exactly how much of a fantasy, you know, I guess you say millionaire, you know, he would be. You know, so just keep that in mind, okay? I, I just don't know exactly how well that guy's going to do for you there. So uh, keep that in mind. Merry early Christmas, Devonta Smith managers. Now, why would I say something like that? I mean, the guy's already starting, right? Well, Philadelphia tight end Dallas Goddard was concussed on Sunday, making Smith an absolute tiger target hound. Now, you think I'd give the gift to Jack Stoll, Goddard's backup, but he really wasn't involved. It was actually more targets for Devonta Smith. So keep that, uh, keep an eye on that. Um, I'll, again, I'll touch on this on the news. But, um, yeah, he's, uh, spoiler alert, he still hasn't been practicing Goddard. And um, so we'll talk about that here in a second. Merry early Christmas, Justin Herbert managers. Pittsburgh uh, Steelers safety, Minka Fitzpatrick, tested positive for COVID and now joins Big Ben on that list. Still haven't I still haven't seen a situation where a player tests positive on Monday and is able to play the following week, so I'd, pre- I'd be, prepared, be prepared for Fitzpatrick not to be active. Hence, the gift for Herbert. And last one. Merry early Christmas, Jeff Wilson manager. Jeff, oops, excuse me. I'm sorry, Mr. S- uh, Jeff Wilson Sr. Merry early Christmas, Jeff Wilson Jr. Managers. Yes, um, San Francisco 49ers running back <clears throat> Elijah Mitchell suffered a finger fracture and he's having surgery done uh, on, see, I believe it's Tuesday to repair it. Now, what they did do is they stuck a pin in it. All right. And the head coach, Kyle Shanahan, says that there's optimism that he could play on Sunday, even going as far as saying that he that there's a very good chance he will play. Come on, man. Listen to what I'm just saying. He put a pin in his fractured finger. He put a pin in his fractured finger. One more time. He put a pin in his fractured finger. OK, if the guy plays, seems true to me that if he does play, he's not going to be that effective. And that, you know, because you kind of need your fingers to hold on to the ball, you know, <laughs> you know, so he, I just see a lot of fumbling going on. I mean, that's just what I see. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I just don't, I just don't see it, man. I just don't see it. It just seems like it's kind of like that weird, you know, uh, coach speak, you know, where they, they say, oh, he's going to play, going to play, going to play, going to play, going to so fool you, you know, that's what it seems like, you know, so uh, just have a backup plan. Seriously. Jeff Wilson Jr. if you haven't already. Yeah, that'd be something good to have. All right. Well, you know, when I do, whenever you hear that, winter is here. The bye weeks are here. Okay, so I already talked to you about the bye weeks that happened back in week 10 to help prepare you. So to help prepare you for week 11, real simple, real simple. The Denver Broncos, so Jerry Judy, uh, Noah Font, uh, the, the, uh, the Gordon and 
and Javante Williams thing. If you're feeling that thing, you know uh, these guys are ones that are going to be uh, are going to be on by for them. And also the Rams, uh, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup. Uh, I guess OBJ if you're nasty. And then the defense of uh, of the Rams. And also Denver. So, you know, a lot of people are starting Denver's uh, defense because they're not that bad. You know, you saw, you saw what they did in Dallas. So, yeah, all these people will be on by. So make sure and prepare adequately. Yeah. So, all right. So let's go ahead and move on to. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Ha! Yeah, the the good news. Yeah, it's always something fun to talk about, and the sultry sounds of Mr. Gary Gnu. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the good news. New York Jets head coach Robert Salah will be starting Joe Flacco over Mike White, stating that Zach Wilson is 100% healthy. Now let's talk about this because earlier in the week, uh, well, we're we're kind of midweek, so I guess well. So Monday, Tuesday, whatever, especially during the waiver wire shows, you've heard all the uh, fantasy football shows, podcasts that were talking about, you know, um, you know, pick up the Miami Dolphins. They're playing the New York Jets. You know, make sure to do that. And they just kind of did that with the idea that Zach Wilson would be playing because that's a fantastic plan to play the defense against Zach Wilson because Zach Wilson sucks right now. Okay, I'm sorry. He does. He's not a very good NFL quarterback right now. Not saying he won't be. Just not right now. They should give him the uh, Mahomes treatment. Let him hold a clipboard. They're not going to the playoffs. Let him just kind of watch. And then let uh, Mike White and Flacco, whoever is doing better, let them take over. Then then he comes in next next year, and he should be better prepared like uh, Mahomes was. But uh, what this actually does, though, with Joe Flacco starting, it actually downgrades, for me, the excitement about starting the Miami Dolphins defense because they don't have any uh, tape on Flacco this year. OK, and plus, dude, they're kind of feeling themselves, you know, the Dolphins, you know, that Dolphins defense. I mean, they did really good on Thursday night against Baltimore Ravens. All right. So it just seems to me that this seems like a trap game for them. So, yeah, I'd watch out for that. OK, so I wouldn't be running out and dropping anything really, really good to pick up Miami's Dolphins defense, especially if you have something good. In fact, let's go and talk about this way. <clears throat> I'm seeing two defenses being dropped by like thousands of teams. Last the last saw last thing I saw Pittsburgh Steelers was like ninety two thousand people in Yahoo had dropped them. Okay, all right, okay. I understand Fitzpatrick isn't there. All right, come on, man. The defense is good. They still got Devin Bush. T.J. Watt should be back. Chill out. All right, don't drop that for Miami Dolphins. Um, Indianapolis uh, Colts. I'm seeing them get dropped. You know the ones that you know scored you like a tremendous amount of points last week because they're playing against the Buffalo Bills. Look what the Jacksonville Jaguars did to the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> okay, so don't drop them either. Okay, all these guys I would hold on above Miami Dolphins. So just throwing out there again. Uh, I'll reiterate this. I should have said this earlier. <clears throat> this show is used to be an, a pointer, right? I'm I'm here. We, the Royal We, whenever Brock is here, we're here to help you make an educated decision on your start sits decisions and also on how to change up your roster and just different news that's going on. We're not the gospel, okay? We're not trying to say we're the gospel. We're just trying to give you education here or a little bit of information. This is a different viewpoint than most podcasts, uh, fantasy f- football podcasts are giving you. So this is hopefully going to round you know, your thinking out. You see the good, you see the bad. And you can make your decision. Whichever way you go is good because it's your team. Play your team the way you want to play, not the way you hear experts say or whatever. Okay? Play it the way you want to play. The Philadelphia Eagles have designated Miles Sanders from the IR, so a crowd of backfield has even gotten even more crowded. Damian Harris has now been taken off of the injury list and will play Thursday. Oh, no. All those people that were so excited putting those top priorities for Ramondre Stevenson. I would not drop him. Let's just see what the way it all plays out. You know, um, it actually might be a 50-50 split, or maybe Stevenson might have taken over. Who knows? We'll see. I don't, I'm not even sure if Belichick knows, but we'll find out on Sunday. So just don't start him. Okay, just have all that stuff happen on the bench. If it blow, if they, if Stevenson blows up on your bench, great. If Harris blows up on your bench, on you know, fine. You know, it just seems kind of weird. I, mean, I know they're playing against Atlanta. That's just buddies up the water. So it's just tough for me. 
But you do you. You know, I'll love you either way. Aaron Rodgers missed practice today due to a toe injury, but did admit that he was quite fatigued during Sunday's game trying to get over COVID. So there's a lot of thought that this is a rest day for Mr. Rodgers. Uh, Marquis Brown missed practice on Wednesday due to a thigh injury. So keep an eye on that. Um, again, this is uh, I'm taping this on Wednesday. So these are the Wednesday practice reports. And everybody knows Wednesday practice, uh, practice reports. Eh. You know, a lot of uh, vets, they have that rest day. So I'm just giving you information. So I just want to make sure and let you know that whenever I tell you this, it's not the sky is falling. It's just give you information. Alan Robinson missed uh, practice due to a hamstring injury. Um, and Dallas Goddard. Now, this one is important. He was a DM, DMP on Wednesday um, due to being in the league's concussion protocol. This is what I was alluding to earlier. He's in the league's concussion protocol. All right. So that's no joke. Okay, so they have to they have to clear certain hurdles in order to get to a point where they can play. So that's not you know a rest day. This is actual hurdles that have to be done. So keep an eye on that. If Goddard's out, dude, there's no tight end from Philadelphia to go grab. You know you're gonna have to go into the pool and grab something there. So um, God bless you there because it's pretty picked through as far as tight ends go right now. Um, I mean you might like I I will tell you that one of my leagues, the ten man league, I did see Dan Arnold there. That'd be a great pickup. Um, I did see Tyler Kirkland in the other league, so that would be another good pickup. You know, so just throwing those things out there. Alvin Kamara was seen at practice on Wednesday. It was described as looking like how Kamara should look. So maybe that injury really was minor. And um, for some reason, they were the Saints were trying out everybody they could. Um, the only thing I could think of logically that if Kamara it really is back and they're not rushing him back, um, all I could really think is that they were trying out all these different running backs just to get an idea of what they look like. So when other teams try them out, they can kind of have some tape on them. That's that's the only thing I could think of as to why they blitzkrieged, you know, all those running backs and signed what Josh Adams or something like that, you know. So and he's still on the practice squad. He never was even he wasn't even elevated. So um, oh, also who's practicing? Tony Jones Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, it's been a. Uh, it's been a while. I wonder if I can find it. I wonder if I can find it. Yeah, because uh, every time we we uh, we talked about Tony Jones Jr., um, I might have actually <laughs> I might have erased it because I was like, man, that guy's never coming back. Yeah, I did, I did, I did, I did. Yeah, the uh, the anyway, yeah. So it was it would have been funny if I'd have found it. Oh well. There you go for data cleanup. <laughs> There's one for you, buddy. Um, Antonio Brown is running uh, according to his Instagram, so take that for whatever you want. Uh, head coach, how about this? This is really important. Head coach Andy Reid said that they might wait until after their Week 12 bye to bring Clyde Edwards-Hilaire back, which is a good idea anyway. Why would you bring him back the week before when he's been out this long? And you have Daryl Williams catching what thirty-two yard, you know, passes. You know, like a like a pro uh, wide receiver. <laughs> you know, like a like an act like that's his actual job as you know the, as a wide receiver, not a running back. So, yeah, it, I think that would be a good idea. I think that's what they're probably going to do. Uh, W2F uh, Washington team football defensive end Chase Young Torres ACL. And Sunday's game will be out for the year. That stinks. Uh, and um, let's see here. Same thing with the Ricky Stills Jones Jr. He hurt his hip. Considered day-to-day. Did not practice on Wednesday. And there was no update given on Logan Thomas. But hopefully, you know, hopefully one of them will be good for Sunday. Or they'll be down two tight ends. That stinks. Here's a, uh, you hear that, Mr. Anderson? This, that is the sound of inevitability. The Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens, that is, released running back Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, that dude was washed. Cleveland quarterback Baker Mayfield is considered day-to-day with a knee injury. Test didn't reveal any structural damage, and it's being assumed that he'll play on Sunday. I already told you that T.J. Watt is trending towards playing this Sunday, so that's really good news. Um, Staying in the Steel City, head coach Mike Tomlin said they are preparing as if Mason Rudolph is their starting QB and it was reported that Big Ben has displayed symptoms of COVID, so he could miss sun- next Sunday, too. Now, if he does, it's a downgrade, of course, for all offensive weapons other than Najee Harris. And I would say that Firemuth's fine, too. Uh, the dude got nine targets last week. Okay, I understand that's against the Detroit Lions, but still, nine targets is nine targets. I understand he did that terrible fumble in the rain, but still, nine targets is nine targets. Um, speaking of COVID... 
Uh, it was reported that Nick Chubb was displaying, also displaying symptoms of COVID as recent as Sunday. And as of today, he still hasn't been cleared. He hasn't been taken off the COVID list. Now, yes, he does have time. He's got Thursday. He's got Friday. He's got Saturday. So he's got three days in order to um, to provide uh, two uh, negative, be asymptomatic and provide two negative tests you know, with, um, outside of, you know, within 24 hours. So he does have that time. Uh, however, dude, look, it's, it's still up in the air. So don't drop the Ernest Johnson just yet. You know, if it does, if you get noticed that, you know, Nick Chubb is, um, uh, playing, you know, uh, then I would go ahead and, uh, I, you know, Nick, you can do what you will with the Ernest Johnson. Um, the chargers, they just, uh, they just placed past rushing specialist, Joey Bosa, on the COVID list, so expect him to miss Sunday versus the Steelers. So that's good news for I guess would that would that be Merry Early Christmas with Mason Rudolph, you know? But you know, you can't really say that with a straight face. Um, let's see here, Green Bay linebacker Whitney Merciless towards bicep in Sunday's game and is out for the season, which stinks so bad. The guy was looking so good on that Green Bay defense, and you know, I'm mean, we're I'm based here in Houston, so man, I, I know Merciless, dude. I mean, he was awesome for the Texans. You know, I'm glad that they let him go, and they gave him his, you know, uh, his freedom, so to speak, you know, and so he landed in a fantastic spot, and it's just, this is just sad, sad, and I mean, hopefully he comes back for Green Bay, but Green Bay, what are they going to look like next year, since Aaron Rodgers isn't going to be there, maybe Adams isn't going to be there, so it's just it just stinks. It just stinks. That 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 one that that one hurt. That one cut me deep. That one cut me deep. <clears throat> All right. So Saquon Barkley is trending well towards playing a week eleven. So anybody that is a uh, Saquon Barkley believer, which is not me, I am not. Uh, the guy just has bad luck, and you know now he's gonna be rusty and coming back. And I don't know, man. Yeah, I I I, I don't know. Uh, you, you can start him. <clears throat> you can start him, especially you've been holding him. And you've been really preparing for him and really needing him, you know? Um, so I understand that. I understand that, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have him on my team, uh, to be honest with you. I just don't need that kind of headache. New York Jets head coach. Oh, yeah. Or actually, no, this 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 is old news. Yeah, because he actually said that uh, before he uh, – this is what I was going to say. Yeah, New York's head coach, Robert Salah, before he – that's what I wanted to say. Before the, he uh, deemed Robert uh, – or Joe Flacco as the uh, uh, starter – he said, well, the quarterback situation, eh, it'll play itself out in organically. And, well, it did. It did. Joe Flacco's starting. Arizona Cardinals co- uh, QB Colt McCoy suffered a pec strain in Sunday's game, but said that he could play if need be on Sunday if Kyler Murray can't go. And on that uh, on that note, on Kyler Murray, uh, head coach Cliff Kingsbury said it will be close, be close regarding Murray. Uh, playing Sunday now there hasn't well that was the only update we got and then also Murray said that uh, he's feeling good and that uh, he is hoping that he has a chance to play on Sunday so man they need him they need him so for all the offensive you know I mean so they, they need him but you know here's one okay that's one side all right that's one side to look at it you know they really need him because uh, the offense looks terrible without him all right but you know, there hasn't been any update on DeAndre Hopkins yet. So let's say DeAndre, on this hand, we got DeAndre Hopkins. That's questionable. Also, uh, Arizona has a bye week in week 12. So that'd be another week of rest. And uh, it, their biggest threat for the division lead, the LA Rams, lost on Monday. So there's a lot of like, eh, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and maybe think about sitting him. Okay, that did it with, for the news. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's move on to the Thursday shoot or cease fire. All right, so that'll be New England at Atlanta. It's a dome game. The opening uh, for uh, the opening over and under is forty-seven points. Hmm, how do we think about that? I would say under because I don't think Atlanta is going to pull their weight. Um, I think it's going to be mainly New England. Um, that Atlanta team. In fact, you know, it's it's easy. It's it's really easy. I'll start with shooter cease fire straight up for Atlanta. And let's just get it out. Just get it over with. Just get it over with. Let's just do it. Pull that bandit off right now. Um Cordell Patterson play you know banged up Cordell Patterson against New England. I don't like that. I don't like that. I, I just can't see starting anyone. I can't see shooting on anybody. You would think, oh Kyle Pitts. Well, New England likes to take away the number one option. Who's the number one option on, on Atlanta? 
Kyle Pitts. You know, and they've already shown that if you put a, um, a if you put a, a quality quarterback on him or bracket him, you know, with two, then he he doesn't produce high. So, you know, I think that's what's going to happen. It's not going to be a very good game for any Atlanta Falcon. Um, you know, Matt Ryan, anybody. I just don't. I just wouldn't shoot on them. So, of course, that makes the ceasefire real easily. Who do you ceasefire on Atlanta? Everybody. See, nice and easy. It always kind of wraps itself. It always plays itself out. But <clears throat> let's talk about New England. All right. Who would I shoot on? Mac Jones. Yep. Hunter Henry. Yep. Jacoby Myers. Yeah, his volume is increasing. And it's a bad defense. And, of course, he just got his first touchdown, you know, uh, this past Sunday. So, you know, God bless uh, Jacoby Myers and the Myers family. Um, Again, you know, this is what I was talking to you about earlier. You know, Ramondre Stevenson, okay. Damian Harris is back, okay. So you could, if you're feeling nasty, like especially in a deeper league, you could go ahead and shoot on him. You know, you could. Um, here's I would temper my expectations since Darius, you know, Damian Harris is back, um, but you know he might get enough to be like flex worthy. You know, so he might be a flex worthy start considering that they're playing such against against a, such a bad defense. And it seems true to me that New England will go ahead and attack uh, the Falcons on the ground because there's no really reason to to to, um, to attack them in the air because you're going to be able to you're you're going to be able to to get some uh, movement. Um, on the ground, so I think that's what's going to be a ground game, which plays very well <clears throat> for Nick Folk. Uh, it's a dame, it's a dome game. Uh, the uh, the ground game would um, sometimes will stall out, which will lead for for field goals. Um, also, um, they're, if they're doing ground game, that means that they're scoring a lot of points. So that means that they're going to be kicking field goals just to keep the score scoring up. You know, so yeah, it seems like a great, 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 great time. It's going to be a smash play for uh, for Nick Folk and the defense, New England defense. I think they're going to do really well too. Who would I, sh- I cease fire on? Well, I went through pretty much all the offensive weapons you should have on your on your team or might have roster but uh i didn't say anything about damian harris now did i i would cease fire on that guy the dude's coming back from a concussion and stevenson might have earned a bigger role so i just don't know what he what his role is going to be and whenever you have that's like the that's like the biggest poison for a fantasy football roster is that i don't know what this role is going to be all right now it creates excitement because I don't know what this role is going to be, but it also can create a lot of disappointment. Why? Because I don't know what this role is going to be. So, you know, make sure and uh, keep all that stuff in mind whenever you're making your decisions. Okie dokie. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to. Oh, yeah. Let's get some little, little Marvin Gay up in here. How about, how about that? Let's just chill out and listen to that for a second. Good stuff. Fantastic stuff. Ooh, love, love, love Marvin. Love, love Marvin Gaye. All right, so let's go and talk about it. Trending up. Trending up. A.J. Dillon. We already talked about A.J. Dillon, so you know now. You know why. <clears throat> Ramondre Stevenson is trending up. So we already talked about now. This time, um, whenever he was really trending up, taking off, Damian Harris um, was not... Um, was not cleared yet right but i think he's played stevenson's played enough to at least be in a timeshare with harris and if harris gets and harris gets banged up a lot i mean he had like a chest injury a knee injury i think it was and then now he's concussed dude gets banged up so he's something great to have on your roster okay i know that you probably can't play him today you know or if you do you know it'd be a flex thing you know but Looking forward, I think it's going to be really good. I think you'll be happy that you have him there. It just, uh, it's just something good to have. It's a, you know, this is the time for uh, a time of year when rookie running backs start taking off. So, this could be his time. Deontay Foreman is trending up. He had 11 rushes for 30 yards, two targets, two receptions, 48 receptions, 48 reception yards. Sorry, uh, last uh, uh, last week he outtouched Adrian Peterson 13 to nine. But Peterson was mainly put in within 10 yards of the goal line. All right, he really was. But again, Foreman looked more explosive. He's about a 4% rostered. Oh, I didn't tell you. Ramondre Stevenson, at the time of this writing, was 32% rostered. Okay, so yeah, Foreman's only 4% rostered, so he might be out there. Cam Newton is t- trending up. He had eight pay- pass yards, one pass t- uh, touchdown, 
three rushes, 14 yards, and one rush touchdown. That's pretty good. <clears throat> that's really, really good for a debut. Especially since he screamed, I'm back. You know, that's, that's you got to do well on that. Be, he's being prepped as a starter, and he helped Robbie Anderson have the best game of the season, which really isn't saying much, but still, he did. Uh, he plays WTF, you know, Washington Team Football, next week without Chase Young. And uh, Washington Team Football with Chase Young allowed the eighth highest completion rate at 67.3% and the seventh highest yards per pass attempt at 7.5. And they, he, <clears throat> excuse me, Neaton is 16% rostered. <clears throat> All right. Who else is, try, is trending up? Wayne Gallman Jr. He had 15 rushes, 55 yards, two targets, one reception for 21 yards. He took over as a lead back for Corderell Patterson whenever he was hurt. 1% rostered, so it might not be bad to fly, put a flyer like that on your bench if you had that spot, especially in deeper leagues. But again, dude, temper that expectations. I already told you about that. Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne. He's trending up. Had four targets. Four receptions uh, for uh, 98, uh, 98 yards, one reception TD. Three rushes for 43 yards. He operated as New England's primary deep threat, so he's 70, he's 7% rostered, so that's something to keep in mind right there. Okay, so he those are the ones that were trending up that were interesting, all right? Now, let's look at the ones trending down, okay? Trending down. Let's see if, if, all, you, if uh, all you and uh, brilliant people because I know you're brilliant because you're watching the show, which makes you brilliant. Jeremy McNichols, the running back for, for the Titans that everybody rushed out to get. Four rushes, seven yards, three targets, one reception, one yard. 51% rostered, droppable. Adrian Peterson, eight rushes, 21 yards, one target, one reception for negative one yards. 59% rostered, droppable. Yeah, and I don't know about four. I, mean, I guess Foreman's the only guy that you'd really want on that. You know, I, mean, I know that Adrian Peterson's the goal line back and all that nice stuff, but Foreman looked best. So if you really want to jump into that, because it looks like it's a full fledged committee, um, Foreman would probably be your best bet. Russell Gage trending down three targets, zero receptions, 27% roster. Now, he isn't the target monster that was predicted after Calvin really took some time off. Again, 27% rostered. Yeah, uh, droppable. You know, Benjamin. Okay, this guy, I wouldn't, you know. Um, okay, he only had six rushes for 22 yards, one target. Now, you got to understand, man. Colt McCoy was the quarterback, all right? It should be different with with Murray. That's another reason why Kyler Murray wants to come back because, you know, this guy got his first touchdown, you know, whenever, I believe whenever Kyler Murray was in the game. You know, but uh, with Colt McCoy, just not good. Um now, because again, just to compare last week. Last week he had uh, not week ten, but week nine. He had uh, he had a TD and nine carries, and it was thought that he could be a, in a timeshare with James Conner, or even take the Chase Edmonds role. Turns out he's only the ha he's only the handcuff for Conner. So uh, Edmonds, um, seventeen percent roster. If you're not the Conner owner, then uh, then you could uh, then you could probably. Uh, you know, Benjamin, you could probably, uh, I'd still hold, ah, ah, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. There's still a chance. Okay. But Edmonds is, is supposed to come back after the week, uh, week 12 by we're week 11 next week is week 12. So that means that the only time you'd be able to use, you know, Benjamin would be with Colt McCoy looks like, and you already know what that is. So yeah, man, if you have something else better to go for, yeah. You know, you know, Benjamin's droppable. It hurts to say that, but yeah, he is. Alex Collins, trending down. 10 rushing yards for four, uh, 10 rushes for 41 yards. One target, one reception, eight yards. 52% rostered. Now, it was reported. I don't know if, I, I don't think I included this in the news because uh, it was obvious, but yeah, uh, Chris Carson isn't, isn't practicing. In fact, like um, uh, Pete Carroll, the overly optimistic, always optimistic, always chewing gum, Pete Carroll, um, man, can you imagine how strong that guy's jaws is? I bet you he could probably bite through a cement brick. <laughs> I mean, that, God bless. Maybe that's what he's chewing on. Maybe it's not even gum. Anyway, I digress. Um, Alex Collins, man, uh, or saying that Chris Car he's saying that Chris Car Carson is not, is not looking good, you know, or at least alluding to that. So Alex Collins actually might be 
the uh, the the lead back, you know, like for the rest of the season. So if you need a good like five to six points, Alex Collins is your man. So look at him for what you want. Uh, and lastly, Mike White, of course, 251 yards, four interceptions, one sack. At the time, it was only 9% roster. I'm sure it's lower now. Um, he, but look, let's talk about this. Okay, let's just talk about this. Let's be honest. Okay, let's let's don't look at these things in the vacuum. There, he was playing against the number one defense with the Buffalo Bills. All right, you know it's Mike White. <laughs> okay, you know Mike White made his hay against teams that were not the Buffalo Bills. So keep that in mind. All right. So I think that New York um, New York should stay either with Flacco or with him. Not not go back to to Zach Wilson. Uh, I it's just Mike White. And uh, I know Mike White has upside. I'm assuming Flacco does. I'm not sure exactly what he does. Uh, we'll see. I know the first uh, his first game is going to be he's going to be fine because again, you know, defenses aren't going to have tape on him. But uh, I, you know, that's not going to be the case. Um, at you know, af- after you know, in week twelve. So keep that in mind. Um, but uh, I still think that uh, Mike White has. Has a lot of upside. Zach Wilson does not. Again, I I can't. I'll reiterate it one more time. Uh, I just don't think that they should play Zach Wilson at all, at all this this, this year. I just don't think it, it's worth it. Yeah, it's just it's let him sit, let him watch. Yeah, it's not. He's not doing. He's not learning on the job. Okay, he might be one of those guys that have to learn by watching instead of learn by doing. Okay, it just might be a thing because he's a good quarterback. He really is. He's taken second overall for a reason. Okay. Uh, the only reason why I can see him playing is if the coach is trying to justify his job, but he just got hired. I doubt they'll, they'll, they'll can. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, that's it. All right. <laughs> okay. With all that said, it's time to put a bow on this show. Yeah, man. We went ahead and went through everything. Yeah. So hopefully, guys, I got you, I got everybody caught, uh, caught up. Hopefully, you were properly entertained. Were you not entertained? You know, if you were, you know, if if you really, if you enjoyed this episode, you know, make sure to like and subscribe. The, you know, hit the like and subscribe button. It's not always just me. I always have uh, Brock is usually with me, uh, so that's always a fun time. I'll have all types of guests come through. I usually have, I have my brother. I'll have uh, Connor come through. Sometimes Ethan for the doc for all you old school people. You know, they might be coming through. I'm at the hundred episode. It's coming, so you know. We might have some 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 it'll be more than just me how about that i can guarantee it'll be more than just me so make sure like and subscribe you know you'll be happy that you did um want to make sure and thank um our supporters of the show sports host app and of course high volume music radio make sure and check them out uh connor again he's got a book on amazon you know too much make sure and check that out and of course every thursday on the high volume music radio app and high volume music radio radio.com Drive Time Sports with Charlie and Brian. You know, uh, internet radio seems to be something that's starting to explode. App, radio apps are exploding. Jump in on it. Make sure and get this local, the, support this local radio station, highvolumemusicradio.com. Hi, download the app, High Volume Music Radio app. You'll be happy you did. Every Thursday on uh, the High Volume Music Radio app, except for, you know, Thanksgiving. But anyway, <laughs> on every Thursday from uh, six or from four to six, Drive Times Force with Charlie and Brian. Check that out. You'll be happy you did. All right. So on behalf of me, your humble MC, Brian the Amigo Baldwin, I want to thank you for watching. I hope that this year is a damn sight better than the last. Parting shots. What would be my parting shot of information to give you? I would say that today is now the time that you, uh, you do... You have to, this is the time to start shoring up your big backs. Okay. I know you've heard this before. I'm going to say it again. If you have any big, big running backs, make sure and get the handcuffs. All right. That's one thing. Another thing is make sure and look at production and not names. Okay. Don't look at names now. Okay. All potential, all, you know, your dreams from the draft are over. It's been replaced by data. Trace, trust the data. Okay. Back up the big guys. Trust the data. All right. That is my party shots. All right. So, again, I want to thank everybody for watching. I mean, I, I mean, it really means a lot to me that you did. I mean, you, you guys are special for doing that. I really appreciate you. And, and you know how I like to close out this, this show. So, everybody has been watching. Say it with me. Remember, everyone, in fantasy football, as in life, don't dream it, be it.
Hubo una vez un gran rey que tenía muchas tierras, un castillo y también un amor. Pero los caprichos de ese amor con el tiempo sin castillo y sin tierras lo dejó. 